Hi, my name is Victor Meyer Schoenberger, and I am sitting here in my office in Oxford, United Kingdom. I am a professor here at the Oxford Internet Institute of the University of Oxford, and I look at the Internet. I look at the deluge of data that we have these days, and I try to make sense of it. Uh, that is what I do, and that is what I teach, and that is what I research. My favorite disruptive hero is Hans Kraus who was my physics teacher in high school. Uh, he was uh, tremendously important and influential for me because uh, at the age of 14 or 15, he introduced me not just to physics, but to a different way of seeing the world. My life at that time um, was in a quaint Austrian Alpine village and everything seemed to be in order. Everything seemed to be making sense and seemed to be absolute. There was either white or black. Um, everything was quite clear for me. And uh, Hans Krauss came in and said, that's really interesting, but in physics, the reality is never as clear cut. And uh, we can always look at things from different vantage points and have different shades of gray. But most importantly, everything in life is not predetermined in, in either a very positive or very negative way, but is probabilistic. Uh, there is a certain likelihood it goes one way or the other, and it can be influenced because you are part of the system you can shape where it goes. And life is like that, he said. Life is full of probabilities, not certainties, and it's full of the ability to shape and change your trajectory. So do it. Uh, he gave me a very positive, very upbeat message. Uh, in addition to making life more realistic to me, but it was very hard at the, at the outset to believe, very hard to comprehend for me because I was brought up in this absolutist world, in this world of no shade of gray. Uh, and he introduced shades of gray, but he also gave me hope, uh, hope that I could influence what kind of shade of gray uh, would dominate my life. So he is my disruptive hero. My favorite disruptive change is big data. That is how we can actually through the use of much more data than ever before, gain insights into reality, into how the world works uh, that we could never have done in the small data era, in the era where we had little data available. Uh, it is tremendously disruptive because for all of human history, we have only collected as little data as possible in order to answer the questions that we had. Why? Because Collecting data was so expensive and then processing it was so expensive uh, that we shied away from it. We tried to live with as little as we could. In the data deluge world, in the big data age, we have billions of data points available uh, for many questions. And that gives us not just the ability to do better analysis, but to go deeper, to look at the details, look at the granular stuff. Uh, and that provides us with insights, with new patterns that we can uh, comprehend, that we can uncover, that we couldn't before. Uh, so just one example that kind of blew, my, uh, blew me out of the water, uh, researchers at the uh, University of Toronto in Canada are able to predict the onset of an infection at a, in a premature baby 24 hours before uh, the first symptoms manifest themselves, not by fancy um, medical treatments, but by monitoring in real time 16 vital signs, collecting over a thousand data points a second, and then doing big data analysis. And interestingly enough, they have found out that the telltale sign of an impending infection at a premature baby is not that the vital signs go haywire, but that they stabilize. And this is mind-boggling because every doctor, when the vital signs stabilize, would say, great, I can go home, uh, everything's okay. But the reality is that this is actually a sign that something is very likely to go wrong. And only through big data analysis we have uncovered this. And this is really a disruptive change. The disruptive change 
I'm currently struggling with is the fact that in this informational world in which we live, it will become harder and harder to make some very definite statements about causes of things. And it's very hard to really say anything about the why of things. It's much easier to say anything about the what of things. We are out of our comfort zone. And if we're out of our comfort zone, our instinct is to go back into our comfort zone and to stick to the old hunches, the old intuitions that didn't work, but that we're comfortable with, rather than try something novel, something disruptive, something new. If we look at something and it's, it's tiring, it's cumbersome, it's costly, it's difficult, it's complex, we don't understand it, we just tend to throw it away. You know, my three-year-old does that. If, if I give him a task, it's too hard. Uh, and I think that's just very human. But at the same time, we only advance ourselves and we only advance the human race if we tackle these issues, not by sticking to the old-fashioned intuition, but by using the disruptive technology that's outside of our comfort zone. Thanks.